I used to be able to draw when I was eight. So let's see if I can get away with it in this video. Born on the 11th of March, 1993. My mum used to joke I was bought from somewhere. Never hard kid, really. Oh, goodbye, baby, on the treetop When the wind blows But it all started with my mum when she went into labour. I was almost born outside Ealing Hospital in the middle of the night. My dad had to smash that door to A&E. I have two siblings, one older sister, Anita, one younger bro, Patrick, a mum and dad, quite the nuclear setup, and Polish nannies for up to six months at a time when we were growing up, which we used to call auntie. We were a Polish immigrant working class family living in Northfield, a green suburb in London. Great for raising a wee family and only one mile from the largest Polish parish outside of Poland. They came to London with nothing in the 1980s. I went to Mount Carmel Roman Catholic Primary School and Polish Saturday School. I used to always get into trouble in Polish school when I was just trying to have fun, impressing the girls. It was Saturday after all, and I just couldn't pay attention in English school, basically. Detention! Or in Polish school, how it would go would be a really awful parents' evening. School was cool, but I was always told off for being a daydreamer. I always loved art, with mates even backing me up when one time my teacher didn't pick me to draw the class poster with the girls. But I was just taught that this was not a possibility. Well, at least in communist Poland it wasn't. I got a private tutor when I was 8 years old, as I had dyslexia, at the time not diagnosed. I remember my tutor suggesting for my mum to buy the Harry Potter book for me to read. Mum didn't want to buy her old copy for £3. Another one of those, it cost too much, wasn't going to read it anyway, son. To be honest, I've never actually read a whole fiction book. Kind of end up daydreaming before I get to anywhere substantial. Okay, back to the family. My dad. He's a building contractor. He renovates property, builds extensions, makes people's dreams a reality. My mum, on the other hand, has one of those safe jobs. An accountant working the 9 to 5 shift. A mum who would bend over backwards to help pay the mortgage. Because of both my parents having full-time jobs, we would have a full-time stay-at-home nanny who would take us to primary school, make classic Polish dishes for us and basically be a real mum. But when I was 10 years old, I was walking into school all keeled over with the worst digestive pain in the world. I was picked up later that day by my nanny, not able to walk the usual one mile home. Instead, I was throwing up bile, collapsing to the pavement in agony. It was the first time I'd ever taken the E3 bus two stops home. Later in Ealing Hospital, I had nine experts examine me. All saying the same thing, appendicitis guys. The next morning I was operated on. But what was meant to be a 30 minute standard procedure became a four hour ordeal for my parents. They had to sign disclaimers assigning the chance of death as a possibility and hoping for everything to work out. My appendix wasn't inflamed. Instead, my guts were inflamed so much that five inches of my terminal ilium and the ilio sequel valve was cut out. My biggest fear until this moment was getting operated on, seriously. Now I see the scariest thing is the state of fear itself. Oh, and can you really trust the doctors? Nine experts. My reality changed very quickly after that, with biopsies of my resection confirming Crohn's disease, also called IBD, intestinal bowel disease. A disease where the body attacks its own intestines causing internal bleeding, cramping and weight loss among other symptoms. I went home after a week in the hospital starting to eat normally. It was white toasted bread with jam and I still remember that crunch of my teeth through the crust. Or what I thought was normal 
and promptly started cramping up. My dad rushed me in arm back to A&E. I was readmitted into a specialist bowel disease hospital, Chelsea and Westminster, for another week. This time, I was reintroduced into food like a baby with a formula milk powder called Modulin, specially designed for Crohn's disease. Straight away, quite obviously, the correlation of certain foods and my disease became apparent. Sweets, crisps, chips, fried meats, pasteurized milk, cheese, pork were off the cards 200%. But there you go. Despite being prescribed loads of medications, my mum never gave up hope searching online for a cure. When I was 12 years old, I started growing fruits and vegetables on my garden shed rooftop. Many tomatoes, strawberries, just like my grandparents in Poland. I loved it. It was so relaxing and fulfilling. Oh, and did I mention the food was the best? The next year, I managed to persuade my mum to get an allotment before it became a trend like nowadays with the waiting list going for years. My teenage years were essentially spent living the good life, picking fresh homegrown organic fruit and veg and bringing it proudly home to whip up a quick salad or two. From about 11 years old my dad would cement into me weight training. He'd be like at least a few sets of press ups every day son. A few arguments later I see the good in that. He was right. Exercise always correlating with great periods of health for me. Proper Eastern European growing up. I briefly became healthy when I was 14, which coincided with a course of prednisolone and sustained weight training. I benched 70kg on a circus test at school, the best in our year for my weight, but my Crohn's quickly took my only release. When I was 16, I moved to college. My London Oratory High School didn't accept me into their sixth form. Something to do with me falling out with the deputy headmaster, Mr. White, as he was my chemistry teacher. Being dyslexic and having Crohn's, I found it hard to focus on book work, and I'd always fall asleep in class because I was so anemic. My Crohn's wasn't very good at the time. Moving to college was stressful and I was put on Infliximab. Basically, Infliximab is a medication with antibodies from mice that was injected into my bloodstream. I was always getting tired walking stairs. The side effect of this immunosuppressive drug is to reduce blood platelets, including hemoglobin, which carries oxygen around your body. This became so critical that my mom was like, Matt, you're turning like yellow green and that culminated with my first blood infusion at this time i got eczema over my chest and back all the medications barely did anything then one time whilst farming in my garden i got super tanned and this literally coincided with my eczema vanishing a natural solution surely not back to school. I made a pact with my parents if I get straight A's that I'd get a car. Like that was like the only way I could motivate myself. (laughs) And they (laughs) ate their words. I was fooled to believe like grades and a degree was like the most important thing. But now I kind of get it's really not that simple. After quitting infliximab and retaining the positives towards the inflammation with my disease and with the, all the extra hemoglobin in my blood, I kind of felt good enough to start wanting to train. I finally built up a load of strength, with Carol being like, always calling me Pujan in reference to the strongest man in Poland. <laughs> But after the stress of exams and me taking a break with exercise for them grades, the Crohn's came back with Carol being like, you're skinny now or confused. So, well, I applied to a host of unis being rejected to UCL, which was my first choice. But I didn't give up and I called back for feedback five times. They lost my group interview notes and the head of admissions asked for my predicted grades on the fifth call as he eventually interviewed me for the 15 minutes and you would never guess he found one more place for me which is literally the story of my life never give up 
if you like this video and you want to check out more, check out part two with the link just below.